If you're just joining us, it's Aberdeen nil, Dundee United 4 as we heard. Celtic are leading Motherwell, a Henrik Larsson penalty in 63 minutes. It's Dunfermline nil, Kilmarnock 6 now. Six goals for Kilmarnock at East End Park. Ali McCoy getting the sixth goal there for Killy. They extend their games, their unbeaten run to six games against Dunfermline. Real problems for Dunfermline at the bottom of the Premier League. It's St Johnston. Let's get the story of that match at East End Park. Dunfermline against Kilmarnock. John Barnes reports. Well, Kilmarnock strengthened their claim for European football with a comfortable victory to leave Dunfermline rooted at the bottom of the table. And Kelly did it without having an out and out striker in the starting lineup. Jerome Varai made his first start after a four month absence wide on the right and played a major part in Kelly's win. John Henry opened the scoring in 26 minutes to give Killy an interval lead, but we had to wait until the 55th minute before Ali Mitchell added the second. Two minutes later, Ian Durant fired in number three. Then midway through the second half, Barai marked his return with a well-worked goal to make it 4-0. In 74 minutes, Henry got his second of the afternoon. Then in stoppage time, Henry turned provider as he set up substitute Ali McCoy to rattle in number six. A great afternoon for Kilmarnock. D deep disappointment for Dunfermline. Dunfermline nil, Kilmarnock six. Jerome Varai returned for Kilmarnock after a four-month absence and the Frenchman showed early on he was determined to give the Dunfermline defence a torrid afternoon. Farai was helped by his Killy teammates and after 26 minutes they opened the scoring through John Henry. It was Henry's second goal for Kilmarnock this season. Alan Mahout was the man with the cutback and Henry got in front of Greg Shields to shoot past Butler. Dunfermline though could have gone in level at the interval. Jim Laughlin caused problems for his own defence when he was short with this headed pass back. But when Scott Thompson's cross looked goal bound, Gus McPherson made the important goal line clearance. There was one more chance for the pars before the break, but Gordon Marshall was again at the top of his form. It was Andy Todd's header from Stuart Petrie's free kick, which forced the keeper to produce this marvellous save. The second half, though, was all about Kilmarnock. And in the 55th minute, they made it 2-0. Although it took a few chances for it to be converted, there was no doubting the quality of the move. Henry may have been denied by Butler, but Ali Mitchell somehow managed to squeeze the ball in at the near post. Farai set up Henry, but while the combination of Shields and the keeper blocked his efforts, Mitchell hammered it in off the luckless Mark Miller. Two minutes later there was even more misery for Miller and Dunfermline as Ian Durant made him pay for slack play out of defence with a fine solo effort. It was Durant's fourth goal of the season and three of them have been against the Pars at East End Park. To be fair to Miller though, he may have had a decent claim that Varai tripped him, but Durant wasn't hanging around to debate it. At the other end, Dunfermline had a rare opportunity, but Owen Coyle's effort summed up the par's frustrations. He made grim viewing for Dick Campbell, but worse was to follow. In 68 minutes, the move of the match produced the goal of the match. Kelly's possession play has been an asset all season, and this showed it in all its glory. A fine build-up featured a seven-man move involving eight passes, and it ended with Jerome Varai showing he was back with a bang. Ian Durant, ever the link man, played a neat one-two with Ali Mitchell and Varai accepted the pass to finish in style. If you've lost count, that was number four and number five was not long in arriving. Another free-flowing move stretched the par's midfield and defence and Alan Mahood set up John Henry for his second of the game. It was Henry's third of the season for Kilmarnock, but his ninth overall, having scored six for Falkirk during his loan spell. The pars plugged away and once more it was Gordon Marshall's turn to show his class with yet another fine stop from Andy Todd. Dunfermline fans had seen enough, but Killy were not finished there. Well into stoppage time, Marshall began the move that was to lead to Kelly's sixth. 
And once again, no Dunfermline player touched the ball before substitute Ali McCoyst inevitably got in in the act. Not only with his goal, but with the way he formally received the congratulations of his teammates. It wrapped up a convincing win for the visitors and strengthened their claim for a European place. It was not easy to keep this place, but we have to carry on because St. Johnston behind is a very good team. And uh, I think we done, we're playing a very, very good football just now. And uh, I think we, we're going to play to Europe next year. You must have been pleased with the return of Jerome Varane. Yeah, he's done well, the boy. Um... I, was, I thought it may have been a bit early for him. He never got a game midweek. He's only played 45 minutes in the under-21s. And um, I just had a gut feeling that he, he could maybe do something. It was a schedule to give us an hour and uh, see what we can get out of it. And uh, he done very well. Kilmarnock's biggest win since an 8-1 victory over Meadowbank back in 1991. Now, we're not sadists here at BBC Scotland. We did actually invite Dick Campbell to join us tonight prior to this, evening, or this afternoon's game. Um, Dick, I have to say, a lot of people will <laughs> credit you for coming in. I thought we might have found you lined in in a, a wee darkened room somewhere tonight. Yeah, no problem trying to get across the Kincardine Bridge tonight. <laughs> but uh, I'm here. I'm glad to be here. Is it... Uh, I mean, it must be the sorest one that you, you've had to experience uh, in your time at Dunfermline, I would think. Yeah, it's the biggest defeat we've had at home for many a year. And it's not understandable, to be honest, the way we've defended against Rangers at Ibrox showed everybody in Scotland that we are a good unit and we're a good defensive team as well when we have to be. And today, we just we had nothing in the tank at all to offer in terms of uh, closing down people and closing spaces and things that we're very, very good of. And um, we were severely punished for um, any inadequacies that we had. Uh I mean, have you said very much to the players at this stage? Can, can you, do you have to contain your anger in a situation like that? You do have to contain it because you certainly can go over the top. I'm a very passionate man. Uh, everybody in the staff at Dunfermline is passionate about their team. But the players, the players will know themselves. And I'm glad it's on the telly tonight. <coughs> I'll sit down with them on Monday morning and address the situation. Uh, because ironically, it's still in our own hands yet. But I'm um, very, very angry. And our players, they'll be angry as well. They've let everybody... Uh, no filming down today. Gordon, from the Kilmarnock point of view, because we simply can't uh, avoid the fact that it was a very good performance by then, and this, I guess, was the, the goal of the, the bunch. That oh, yeah, around. I mean, it was, uh, I mean the, a 6 0 win away from home is absolutely fantastic. Kilmarnock haven't been scoring an awful lot of goals recently, but although they came back, got four last week against Aberdeen, so maybe they've just been boosted by that. But, you know, this is a good goal, great move. But, uh, you know, I have to say that from that sort of angle, I wouldn't be expecting. Uh, Jerome Varai to score from there. Well, Ryan Giggs did it in midweek. Didn't he? Yeah, for that angle, <laughs> I haven't seen that angle yet, but I think that's, I think that was savable to be honest. Although yeah. it was a great move, and uh, I don't think you know Dick obviously can't say too much at the moment, but I'm sure he'd be analysing a few of these goals, having seen them himself for the first time on television, and say, well, what's going on here? But look, you know, it's a very tight position there. You got if you get across the keeper and beat him, that's fine, but not in at the near post. So I'd imagine there's quite a few of the goals would probably be uh, deemed to be avoidable. But having said that, Coman, a, a marvellous performance and a surprising one from the point of view of Dunfermline. I mean, a real shock for them to lose six and lose at home. Dick, you said it's still in your own hand. The next couple of matches are, are clearly vital. You've got Dundee United at home and Hearts away. And I guess that's going to tell you a lot about your players over, over those two matches. Yeah, well, <coughs> mathematically, it's very important that you, you don't let anybody get away from you at this stage of the season. Um, it was a surprise for everyone today because we've been beating at home because we've not been looking like losing goals. And Dundee United now is paramount. That's the first one you focus on. And um, then the Hearts game on the Monday. And if you were to lose these two games, you've got almost an impossible task ahead of you. But it's the way the Premier League's been going lately. Everybody's beating one another. And um, whilst we won't um, disregard the performance today, You've got to go on with next week's game now, and Dundee United's game becomes of paramount importance to everybody at Dunfermline. 